Good morning, everybody. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. We're going to talk about our increased chances for severe weather as we head into your weekend. It begins today. We have a little Alberta clipper making its way through the northern plains. At the same time, we have a Colorado low that's going to begin to develop in the central Rockies as we go through the night tonight and into your Saturday. That increases the risk for severe weather. Let's get to the very latest right here and let's get started. Number one, what we're looking at for today is a narrow line where we could see a marginal risk of severe weather. It does does include Minneapolis and St. Paul as we head through the day as well. Right now, we have a, a very heavy rain system working its way through the Gulf Coast, and that continues to bring some showers of rain down there. But not only that, a risk for an isolated storm. Now, the green areas that are filled in green are illustrative of areas that have a marginal risk, meaning that a couple of storms might flirt with severe weather. We're not expecting widespread severe weather, and if it does become severe, it's going to be just on the precipice of what we deem severe. And in meteorology, one inch diameter hail and wind gusts to 58 miles per hour deemed severe. That's when damage really begins to take uh, hold. Now, as we take a look at the threat as we go into your weekend on Saturday, here we go. The chances increase in the central plains. So most of western and northern Missouri, eastern Kansas, and northern and eastern parts of Oklahoma are involved in what's called a slight risk of severe weather. Going in a little closer, you can see Empire all the way, uh, Emporia rather, and Wichita uh, all in the uh, line of fire for a more widespread severe weather event. All modes of severe weather will be possible, but large hail and gusty straight line winds will certainly uh, be the uh, the main threat. So that is Saturday and into your Saturday night. Here is the big change. On Sunday, there is an enhanced risk of severe weather over a very large area. As the Colorado low makes its way through, it's going to scoop moisture from the Gulf. And we'll have a lot of moist air. Check that off of the list of ingredients for severe weather. And that storm system itself will have changing winds with height that gives us shear and some areas of spin in the atmosphere. So some strong tornado potential is evident from central Nebraska, northernmost portions of Louisiana, northern portions of Mississippi through western parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. Now in Indiana, all the way into western Ohio, we'll have that enhanced risk of severe weather. And again, all modes of severe weather uh, will be a possibility as we go through your Sunday. Now let's take a look at the forecast track on this. Now we'll look at that USA view and then we'll sneak down into this level of the nation here in the Central Plains to show you. Here's what's going on and let's go ahead and step through this. This is the European model. And as far as meteorology goes, the Europeans have something right. What makes this model more better than maybe the American model more oftener? All right, pardon my English poor at that, but let's go ahead and discuss real quickly. The European model uses more points. It is a higher resolution, longer term or longer range model, meaning it has more data points going in. And how they handled the estimation of what's going on at these data points is, I think, the key. So fast computing, more data points in, better assumptions of what's happening at those data points make a huge difference into the output. Now let's talk weather. Number one, today's snow system skirting out of Alberta is going to bring a chance of ice making its way all the way in toward the Great Lakes. Look at this, exploding as we head toward the evening. This is the Friday evening drive time in northern parts of Michigan, the UP, and heavy snow out there in Ontario uh, from Thunder Bay on out to the east. Now, this system isn't quite done yet. We'll see a little bit of light snow making its way through northern Minnesota. Look at the icing moving right into upstate New York as we go into the midnight hour tonight and heading all the way out toward the east coast as we go into the daybreak hours. Here's that rain system that I was speaking of, continuing to bring rain to huge. Houston, Louisiana, towards the uh, areas of uh, New Orleans as we go through. Here's a Colorado low developing, and this is the culprit that's going to bring the risk of severe weather. So Saturday's risk of severe weather for the Minneapolis area really coming in this time frame when this low is making its way through. One or two of these showers or storms that work their way out into the north could bring a, a, a chance for a little bit of hail. Now, at that, here's the Colorado low. Colorado Rockies on the 
western slopes getting some big time snow, rain on the eastern plains of the Rockies and the high plains of the panhandle of Nebraska into parts of South Dakota it becomes snow as we head into the evening. Here we go. Saturday morning and midday, we'll have a chance for a few thunderstorms down south in the Gulf Coast states, but the main event gets going right here. Warm front on the north side of this system could bring some areas of thunderstorms in parts of Iowa and stretching down into Kansas as well as Missouri as we go into the afternoon. See that development right there? So that will be the main threat. The timing on that is going to be the afternoon hours from around 3 p.m. Central Time through around 7 p.m. And then they seem like they really dissipate fairly quickly. Meanwhile, in parts of southern Tennessee, uh, probably all the way down into parts of Alabama, we'll have a chance for some garden variety thunderstorms. It could be stout here or there, but not everywhere. Now, as we head into your Sunday afternoon, watch the big difference. North winds pulling cold, dry air off of the Rockies, mingling with this humid air in the deep south, and those are perfect ingredients. Not only that, we do have a warm front boundary here and a, what we call a triple point. Down south of this low right here, we'll get another low starting to develop, which means another warm front, more shear and spin right here. So as this gets going, we'll have a chance of all modes of severe weather. This backward C shape right here that looks kind of like a, well, a backward C. What that's showing us is a, a linear windy cluster of thunderstorms. Damaging straight line winds could exceed, well, 80 miles per hour in those thunderstorms. Straight line winds can be terrible and damaging too. Boot Hill of Missouri, all the way through the Kentucky border here with places like uh, Illinois, as well as Indiana, will have that risk of severe weather as we showed you. Meanwhile, this Colorado low gets a little on the nasty side with its wintry weather precipitation. Moving through the Dakotas, moving through Minnesota, another band of ice, heavy rain. I do think the border counties with uh, Minnesota and and Iowa stand a fair chance on the early hours of the morning on Sunday of hearing rumbles of thunder, having thunder, snow, thunder, sleet, and rapid accumulations of snow. So that's a look at the European model with regards to this system. Rainfall potential, let's take a quick look at that as we go through. This is total over the entire number of days, so we're just going to look at that. Now, the system skirting the northern plains today, the Alberta Clipper brings a shot of rain. Look at the rainfall in Texas. As we go down there, Texas into southern Louisiana, two to five inches. You see the numbers right here? Two to five inches of snow estimated by this particular model. And meanwhile, while that storm system creates snow working out of Colorado, uh, liquid equivalent moisture is going to be on the order of a good half inch or more as we move into parts of southern Minnesota, much of Nebraska as well, getting a healthy dose of a liquid equivalent moisture. Now the main event as the Colorado low explodes through the central plains, we'll start to really see things adding up as we go through your Sunday forecast. All of the purple areas you see here, uh, areas that are going to see between one and two inches of liquid equivalent moisture and under the thunderstorms it will be even more, particularly those strong gully washers that really add up quickly. Now taking a look at the winter weather aspects of this Colorado low from the European models standpoint. A very heavy dose of snow is already on the ground in Winnipeg right now. I will effort to show you that in a minute, but the snowfall forecast, here's the Colorado low on Sunday morning, Saturday night, rocking through Nebraska, parts of central and southern South Dakota, skirting the North Dakota border as we go into your Sunday morning. And by Sunday morning at 6 a.m., we'll have a healthy amount of snow on the North Shore, also in the northern parts of Wisconsin. So so Superior, Duluth, and that north shore of the big lake here, going to get a dose of some sticky white stuff. Take a look at that system, really rocking parts of Ontario with some very heavy snow that heads on into Quebec as we go in through the Rocky Mountain West, seeing snow, as will the well, the Sierra Nevada potentially seeing some significant snow showers beginning as we go into Monday. So that's a look at the national weather. Again, we do have that risk of severe weather from this Colorado low that will be pushing through the uh, nation as we go into your Saturday in Kansas and Sunday into much of the Central Plains and the Deep South, northern portions of Alabama, much of the state of Arkansas and northern Louisiana. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. If you've appreciated what you see here or you have a question, please drop that question in the comments below. I'm a meteorologist who has been broadcasting on to air as a chief meteorologist for the better part of the last 30 years. And now I'm streaming every day.
And I love it. And I love the interaction with you. So make sure to comment below. If there's something you'd like to see a little different, let me know. We'll take a look at that now cast radar and show you what's going on as we head into our Friday morning. We have snow aplenty up in that Winnipeg area. Thunderstorms rocking through Chicago and northern Indiana as you're heading out the door on your way to work. These showers and thunderstorms moving at towards Kalamazoo right now, exiting Chicago towards the South Bend area at this particular time. Milwaukee going to get some wet rain from that system as it works its way through. Meanwhile, in the deep south, we do have that shower, uh, the showers of rain that were near the Rio Grande Valley now pushing up into parts of eastern Oklahoma and the Dallas uh, metroplex here, heading in towards Texarkana. And pretty soon, we'll be pushing in that northeasterly direction towards Fort Smith and Fayetteville in western parts of Arkansas. Meanwhile, we have thunderstorms out in the Gulf, and you can see the motion of these storms just inching their way northward with their thunder and lightning. Meanwhile, on the West Coast, as we take a look at this in 3D, we'll take a look at the showers and look at that, Seattle and the Cascades getting rain and snow and mixed precipitation. Meanwhile, Spokane getting some nuisance showers and in the elevated terrain, that's becoming snow in the Cascades of Washington. But now check this out. In the big sky country of Montana, I detect a couple of lightning strikes right here near Glasgow. That's thunder snow. Oh, thunder. Thunder snow and thunderstorms working their way through Harlem up there north near the Highway 2 corridor up north. And we have Glasgow as we take a look at that. What's it look like in Manitoba right now? Well, our neighbors to the north, I can tell you what, it is mighty white. So let's take a quick peek at these roads that are happening. This is Montana. Let's go ahead and take a look at Manitoba. My mistake there. Okay, here we go. Deep south. Look at this. Closed roads near Dauphin. So you're looking at areas north of Winnipeg, north of Brandon, Manitoba, and we have some mighty white roads that made their way through the Winnipeg area. So this is Winnipeg this morning as you're heading to work right there at Deacon's Corner on the southeast side of town. And it's some schmutzy looking road conditions there. But up to the north, north of Brandon, these roads are indeed closed. So uh, St. Rose, check this out. Very white. Looks like a winter wonderland up there in parts of southern Manitoba. So drive with care. Remember, if you're in the northern plains, Hutchesweather.com is a wonderful resource for your road reports. Know before you go. Hutchesweather.com. Road conditions, snowfall amounts reported across the nation, and you can upload your viewer pictures to us and share them. And I've got a lot of doozies. Here in the Northern Plains, we get the Northern Lights and check these babies out. We've had a delight of Northern Light. And then in the daylight with that sun, we had a tease of spring up here. And now it's snowing like crazy up near the international border. Check out these photos, upload your very own. But for now, I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I sure appreciate you slamming the subscribe button there on YouTube. If you uh, venture over to Facebook, check me out. Hutch Johnson, Chief Meteorologist. I'd love to have you follow me there. And of course, my website is just mentioned. Have a lovely Friday and be ready and weather aware as you head through your weekend in the central plains for severe weather and in the northern plains oh no it's winter again <laughs>